Uh, good afternoon. We are here at the 2010 Broadband Minority Empowerment Summit, and most of you probably know this gentleman sitting here, Mr. Hill Harper. Many uh, hyphenates uh, that we could add, author, actor, activist, uh, all around good guy. Um, two questions I'm asking people today. Mm -hmm. uh, one is, what uh, are you doing on an individual basis to address this issue of this digital divide? And then what you think individuals can do uh, to affect positive change wherever they are. Okay. Um, both great questions, Malik. And, and let me say first to, to, to this man who, you know, he's always, I've known him for years, and you've, you've always done work for the community and, and for helping folks spread the word, do all sorts of different things. And so I'm very proud of you and the work you're doing, and thank you for being here. Um, number one. Number two, you know, what I've been working on is I have a foundation called the Manifest Your Destiny Foundation, and it came out of my first book. It's the subtitle of my first book, Letters to a Young Brother, Manifest Your Destiny. And we, what we do is we work with young people, both young men and young women, um, trying to help them achieve their dreams and goals. And we believe that it starts with a foundation of education. Um, and digital empowerment is, is a cornerstone to that because the way the future is moving, um, this whole summit is about this. It's about the fact that we have a choice. We can either use um, technology to level the playing field because, you know, I went to Harvard Law School. These young brothers and sisters have free access to a larger library at their fingertips through technology than I had going to the Harvard Law Library. Can you say that again? So, say so, that slowly. Okay. That's that one piece. Because there are people that are going to watch this that don't really understand okay. how deep so, that is. So, 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 so basically understand that technology could be used and should be used if we think proactively in how to actually get it out there to lower the, uh, to, 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 to even out the playing field. I went to Harvard Law School and there's a, it's considered the best law library in the world. And when I went there, we paid a, a lot of money to go there and you got access to information because of the library, the information that was there. Now, at an individual's fingertips right here in South Central Los Angeles, there's more information at their fingertips than in the Harvard Law School Law Library. That is real. Now the question is, first of all, do, do individuals and families understand that? Do they understand the opportunity? And do they have access to it? And how can we deal with those issues? And so um, I want to figure out ways, and my foundation, the Manifest Your Destiny Foundation, wants to figure out ways to help people live their best life. How do they do that? with information. You need to build it on a foundation of information and technology allows that. And so um, digital empowerment is, a, like I said, a cornerstone to that foundation in my opinion. I love it because I think a lot of times people on an individual basis see someone like yourself say, well, you know, you've gone to Harvard, you, you know, you've had a career as, as an actor and now as an author. Um, you have more opportunity, more access, but you didn't start here. No. You started as an individual. I went to public school here in California, and there are no excuses anymore. And that's technology. Where we are now, folks used to say, well, you know, his family could afford to get him an encyclopedia set. I, I don't have an encyclopedia, so I can't. Or his family could afford to do this. Listen, now there are no more excuses. We have access to the information. It's there. And the question is now, are we going to be smart enough to educate people how they can access it and the reason why they should and figure out ways to either interact with government or private entities to smartly be proactive and providing technology infrastructure for supporting communities. Um, we really could, th th this is truly a civil rights issue and an equality issue as we move forward. Mm, mm, mm. So taking it down to the individual that might be watching this and thinking, okay, well that sounded really good, Hill. Um, so I'm in a community where I have no access to broadband. I go to the library, it's not there. My kids don't have it at school. Um, I like what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe I can access some of, inf of the information you speak about on my, on my mobile device. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Uh, can help motivate an individual who doesn't feel motivated and use the very important word proactive because most people are passive right. when it comes to issues of great social change. It's usually a small group of individuals. Right. So what would you uh, propose for an individual? Well, okay, there's a couple things. You know, the vast majority of, of libraries, uh, you know, in, 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 in most communities, public libraries have at least some 
online access. So if we're talking about someone who has, has no opportunities, in fact, they don't have it at their school, they don't have it at home, they don't have it in their community or a friend or a neighbor, there's some, some way. So if you, if, if you, you know, search that out, because I believe you know, 90% of this country can find that. Now, you may have to drive a ways, you may have to go to a different community, but take a Saturday or a Sunday to do that. Then you can go to an organization for, uh, like Alliance for Digital Equality. This is why they exist. Um, to work with individuals to, to, to help push an issue forward. And, you know, we, we, we saw the video earlier today where they gave out computers um, and there was a, a, a partnership, a private-public partnership. Um, and that's, that's really what I push for. When I think about my nonprofit, the Manifest Your Destiny Foundation, you, you know, we slowly but surely are working with corporations to add more and more technology pieces on, on our site for free. Um, and there are other organizations that are doing the same thing. Let's speak to that process. I think a lot of times people, uh, they have visions. They go, I want to do this thing, but don't understand the steps that they need to take. So right. just around that specific piece of getting the partnerships with organizations to give you things for free. Right. How, what's that process like? Well, <clears throat> listen, there are tons of, of nonprofits across this country that, that deal with, the, with the, the, uh, the whole, their whole idea is access and the whole idea is help. So the question is, is really doing the work and research in your individual community to find out who's doing what and where. You know, in Los Angeles, folks can go, there's a place called uh, uh, the, what, what, the, the after school program, um, A Place Called Home. Okay. It's called A Place Called Home. Students can go there, get on the is that net. the place that Will and Jada help? I think they, they yeah, help, and a n- number of celebrities. Yeah, yeah. I know uh, Jasmine Guy's been involved in that. Right, right. And so uh, there are individual places that don't get a lot of national recognition. I mean, Boys and Girls Clubs, all these different p- places where you can go on, get on the net, and get access to information. And But, it, but it's about thinking entrepreneurially and about thinking um, that the barriers are decreasing. So there are no more excuses. In other words, if you have an idea to do something, Rather than saying, you know, I, I, if I just had this, I should, no, just do it. And then you will be able to find, if you're serious about it and you're organized, you'll be able to find partners that'll help you achieve it. They're out there. Um, I, I, you know, the, the days of the, the hookup idea are, is, is over. You know, this isn't about hookup. This is about thinking entrepreneurially, working hard, and then finding partners. Okay. I think that's a recipe for success, no matter what your endeavor is, being focused, being uh, uh, working hard, organized, being organized, and believing you can do it, and uh, thank you. There's nothing you can't do. I know you got a flight to catch. I do. You keep talking about no excuses. One of the things I love is that you went to Harvard Law School with who? Uh, the president. Who? The president, President Obama. Oh yeah, yeah Mr. So uh, we, president, uh, oh, yes, sir, yes, sir. And uh, he's he's a great example of someone who uh, worked extremely hard, very organized, and and really saw no limit to what they could achieve, and. And, uh, you know, I've looked up to him for a long time, not just because he's taller than me. (laughs) That's a good way to end it, bro. (laughs) Have a safe trip. Thank you. Thank you.